Συνεχίζουμε και μετά τον κύριο Πυρακά. Let us continue. Now I have the honor and the pleasure to be in the presence of Peggy Andonatu, Andonaku, the general manager of Southeast Europe Google. Google, welcome, ma'am. We had a lot of interesting things. The minister had interesting things to say, but first a video before we have a discussion. Sure. This year has been extremely challenging for me. I am broken. And I am healing. I'm here at the memorial wall. I wanted to do something to remember my mom. For some reason, I'm having anxiety. Obviously, it's normal with everything that's going on right now. I think I'm going to take a break for a while. You can get through it. And if you can get through it, there's a greater reward on the other side. Just like anybody else, you know, I'm just trying to do my little part to try and save my community. Hello. I'm just really excited we're back open. And I am smiling under my mask. Incredible scenes on the day the fans came back. Welcome back to the theater. You guys, it's been so long. You're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're just like, there I am. Be your best. Never, ever, ever stop dreaming. I don't care what they tell you. In the above entitled matter as to count three, find the defendant guilty. I am first in the ages. We are not drowning, we are fighting. We cannot keep quiet about climate injustice. No action is too small. We just have to band together as a community and get people's lives back. Even as we grieved, we grew. Even as we hurt, we hoped that even as we tired, we tried that we'll forever be tied together, victorious. Kira Donaku, fight to come back stronger, opos lege to. Fight to come back stronger. People always do the best they can in order to come back stronger eh, in the face of hardship. So, what's the message you're communicating uh, in 2021? What you saw was, of course, what Google search would give you the world over. 2021 has proven to be a year of reconstruction, restructuring, and I think that this is something we'll agree on. We kicked off this year feeling already tired. We embarked on this year already feeling disappointed still with hope that 2021 would be our comeback year. 2021 would be the year when we would be back to some sort of normal. To an extent, this has not happened, not the way we expected. And so somehow, some way, we are in the same position a year later and we're still hopeful that 2022 will be a better year. We as a species never give up, we never stopped, we proved so much, we become stronger, you, we find the best uh, we have. Uh, Mr. Pirakaki said that, that there's a certain density of events amidst a crisis and I liked his statement and I believe that in a special way this crisis pushed us forward. Is there maybe no normalcy and maybe we should uh, reset the future? I don't think we're going back to what we were used to. To an extent, I'm hopeful that we are not going back to what we were used to before. I hope we learned our lessons. And a fundamental lesson is the importance of the environment and how significant it is to take into account the environment in everything we do. And I hope that we also learned that the way we used to work and the way we work needs to be ameliorated. So the way things are, we're never going back to how we used to work. We are going forward with some sort of hybrid model. There will be certain flexibility and I think that to a certain extent uh, people are asking for it. The new ways of working have improved people's lives and then we've also seen that it's important for this to happen in an equitable manner. There are many studies indicating that women tend to pay a higher price because of the pandemic 
in terms of their work. So how can we be equitable? How can we make sure there will be no collateral damage? Productivity is still high, even in these circumstances. So there was a sense of trust between the enterprises and the working people. So let's build on it. People say that to have equality, to have sustainable technology, to have access to tools, big companies such as Google play a critical role. What is sustainable technology for you? You know what is really interesting for people who've been working in this field for many years, like me, is the fact that a few years ago, I remember we used to say that all technologies, will, all companies will become tech companies. And there are many companies in all sectors that state they are tech companies to a certain extent, indeed, to a certain extent, in the sense that they have certain applications that they will be using uh, technology vertically in shaping, in health, in the tourist industry, they'll be using specific applications to make sure they have a global presence which is now needed. At the same point in time, there's this contradiction in terms. On the one hand, all companies are headed that way and then there's a gap in terms of digital skills. It's obvious. They, there are studies and surveys conducted by Google and McKinsey, and it turns out that about 90 million uh, jobs will need digital skills which are missing as we speak. And on average, 25% of the jobs per year will go through some sort of digital transformation or conventional. How can we do that in a viable manner? Sustainability and the whole sustainability debate is huge. Uh, it's pertinent to the state, the government, the business people, and also the citizens. And so big platforms and companies like Google can operate on three different levels, all three. One thing they can do is to provide citizens and businesses alike with tools and even the state tools for them to make more sustainable choices. A typical example is this. Google Maps will now be giving you the alternative routes, especially the most sustainable ones. And whenever you book, you book a ticket, a flight ticket, you'll see the footprint of your flight. It's important to show so much. Citizens, consumers are paying attention to such issues, especially the tourist industry that you mentioned before. We, Google, post signs next to or label those hotels that abide by ESG parameters. And this is something that consumers take into account whenever they make a decision. So it's very important, one, to have such tools. That's one level at which we can help and operate. The other thing is to become models. So the company is committing itself to have zero carbon footprint by 2030, which means that data centers, offices, everything we do over the world will use RES. When you have such global companies do that, then it's possible for everyone to do that. So clean energy for Google as well. Yes, absolutely. Now, practically speaking, when it comes to skills as such, you've done things because you have tried to help people that are entering the labor market. Globally speaking, this is a huge priority for us. And I'm very happy that a lot is happening in Greece with regard to this particular issue. And I'm really proud because even in the toughest quarantine of the past two years, during the lockdowns in particular, we never ceased our operations or that training became virtual, digital. I'm not talking simply about a platform where you download the video. I'm talking about people on the other side of your screen, of your monitor. You can go virtual and make appointments one-on-one uh, -on -one or more. And I think that uh, over the past two years, we have trained over 50,000 people. And I think this is important. And Along the way, we were more specific. We trained people in the tourist industry, in the retail business, in And, you know, a lot has to happen, and we are lagging behind compared to the average of Europe. But they adjusted, indeed. They adjusted really fast, and then there was the issue of regions. We trained the regions, the Cre region of Crete, one of our recent uh, trainees. We helped the region of Crete uh, provide its own Cretan business people with such access as skills. It's important to look at things that way. And then... Um, Education. Education must become more flexible and uh, pick up speed. Uh, adjustability must happen faster. And so 
when you have degrees, that's a good thing. But when you want to um, go uh, faster or you want to upgrade yourself, there are digital grades and uh, digital degrees that we provide in conjunction with Coursera. Over the period of six months, you can do a trade in certain fields. You can start from scratch and therefore you can also try to get a job with Google. It's important. So education and training, second opportunities, giving people second opportunities. Yes. And then again, lifelong training. Since we are pressed for time, I would like to have two comments of yours on two issues. First, multinational corporations of the past few years are coming one way or another to Greece. I'd like to know whether you would like to proceed with digital dipping in this part of the world, southeastern Europe. And another comment I'd like to have is what the title of this meeting means to you, Entrepreneurship 2.2. I'll start with the ladder. Entrepreneurship 2.0 is about a CEO or a business person who's no longer just uh, caring about his or her shareholders, but rather they care about the stakeholders. We're talking about the people who are interesting and interested in what uh, this company can do. So the social partners, the environment, the working people, the customer, the investor, we care about all of them as a total. We also care about the uh, example we are setting. We are also interested in labor and diversity of labor. So this is a good fad to me. This competition, there's also good competition. Everybody's trying to make good and they're competing on be better in that. So we want to make sure that we communicate our best messages. We do good for the work, is the environment. So this is a good message overall. And this is what uh, one would expect now when you're faced with CEOs or business people. Of the past two years, Google has uh, created a special program for Greece titled Go Greece with Google. Lots happening there. I've been working in this field for many years and I've been in Greece working in this field for many years. I was looking forward to getting to where we are today. So I'm happy. This is a good story. These are good things happening. We are ushering in change. There's a state and there's a platform. As the minister said, we are trying to help the private sector and I'm sure there's a lot ahead of us, a lot of promising things. So a more inclusive capitalism is what we need based on what you said and thank you very much.